Hello, uh, in this presentation, I will focus on lessons learned uh, with Lisa Pathfinder about galactic cosmic ray flux and long term and short term variations for the estimate of the charging process of the test masses that will be hosted on board Lisa and the future um, space interferometers. Um, the problem is that uh, uh, high energy particles, the typical energy is above 10 of MeV uh, per nucleon. Uh, penetrate or interact in uh, the material of spacecraft and instruments and in the case of LISA uh, induce spurious coulomb forces uh, on the test masses. For this purpose Monte Carlo simulations with both GM4 and Fluca have been carried out by taking into account uh, the energy dependence uh, of galactic cosmic ray flux variations and uh, uh, in particular, we, benefit, uh, of, we have benefited of uh, data gathered with particle detectors on board uh, LISA Pathfinder. Uh, during the LISA Pathfinder mission operations, no any particle events were observed, but uh, uh, we carried out uh, uh, Monte Carlo simulations also for these events uh, to uh, compare the effects to uh, the galactic cosmic rays. I recall quickly that Lisa Buffinder was sent into space uh, uh, in, uh, at the end of 2015 and remained into orbit for one and a half year. The mission ended on July 18, 2017, and the spacecraft remained into orbit during the declining phase of the solar cycle 24 during uh, uh, a period of low solar activity and the positive epoch of the global solar magnetic field. In the bottom picture, uh, I have reported our predictions uh, for uh, uh, the input fluxes for the test mass charging before the mission was sent into space. Uh, the dashed lines uh, uh, were the maximum prediction, the continuous line, the minimum predictions for protons and helium that together uh, constitute 98% of the uh, cosmic ray bulk. Uh, we had the opportunity to redo the, uh, mm, the simulations with the actual flux of cosmic rays for the period, therefore uh, the most abundant particles uh, uh, of cosmic rays, protons and helium, were measured by uh, AMS-02 on the space station, in particular for the period uh, uh, when the test mass charging was measured in, uh, um, on the spacecraft. Uh, LISA uh, will trail Earth about 50 million kilometers at one astronomic unit, and as a result, less on so with LISA Pathfinder, uh, about uh, uh, cosmic ray variations can be used uh, for, uh, for LISA, but unfortunately we won't have any possibility to benefit of the data gathered by the uh, NASA uh, ACE and WING missions orbiting near Earth about the interplanetary medium parameters and uh, uh, magnetic field. Um, the, the only uh, good news uh, are that we uh, will, uh, will probably uh, LISA will remain into orbit uh, under very similar conditions of solar activity uh, than LISA Pathfinder because the, the solar cycle 26 is supposed to be even weaker than the 24 that was the weakest of the last 100 years. Uh, this is a sketch of the situation. Um, High energy particles go through the instrument and uh, interact. Uh, some of them stop in the test masses that are cubes of 4.6 centimeters size of gold and platinum, and in Lisa find they were placed at 38 centimeter distance. 13, about 13 grams per centimeter square of material surround the test masses in Lisa Pathfinder. Uh, we, uh, for each event uh, that the positive charge on the test masses, we calculate the net charge where positive and negative uh, uh, particles cancel out and the effective charging associated with the noise of the deposited charge of both uh, signs. Uh, the, uh, as I recall before, the test mass charging was measured on board LISA Pathfinder in April 2016. These are the results. Uh, we found ab about 23, 25 uh, charges per second uh, on the two test masses and more than 1,000 charges per second for the effective charging. Uh, the present simulations with uh, proton and helium measured by AMN02 and electrons that were um, estimated for, for the period, we found very similar results. 
mainly if it's taken into account that uh, to these numbers 21 and 22 uh, for the net charging about uh, uh, around 900 charges per second for the um, for the uh, effective charging the nuclei have the role of the nuclei have to be uh, added uh, we did in uh, uh, include in the simulations uh, the uh, nuclei because uh, uh, the uh, predictions would have introduced uh, uncertainty larger than the contribution that this particle give to uh, the test mass. Uh, the details uh, of this work uh, will be given uh, in the Mattia Villani's talk on Thursday, uh, July 20, uh, 28 at 3.20 in uh, uh, the afternoon. Um, to give you an idea how good uh, uh, the measurements of cosmic rays were carried out uh, on LISA Pathfinder, reported here of the data gathered during the whole mission operations, the increasing trend is associated with uh, uh, the um, long term variation of the uh, solar activity, while the spikes uh, are due to the transit of interplanetary coronal mass ejections that produce three, four boost decreases. Uh, and to uh, high speed streams uh, that uh, uh, generated the recur 23 recurrent variations. In the top figure on the right, uh, it is possible to notice that there is a very nice linear correlation between the, the monthly average count rate and the solar modulation parameter that is actually um, representing the uh, modulation of, of cosmic ray, the long term modulation of cosmic rays. Uh, while if we want to take into account the role of the interplanetary structures, we should consider a, a, a solar modulation parameter estimated on a daily basis. The problem is that uh, the long-term variations and short-term variations uh, do not involve particles of the same uh, energies and uh, the test mass uh, charging is uh, strongly energy dependent. Therefore, uh, long-term and short-term variations uh, of cosmic rays must be uh, decoupled and uh, uh, the uh, Forbus decreases due to the interplanetary counterpart coronal mass ejections, interest particle uh, well above 10 uh, GeV, while the recurrent variations uh, due to the passage of, uh, of high-speed solar wind streams uh, uh, involve particles up to a few GV, while in the uh, long-term variation of, of cosmic rays uh, um, modulate the cosmic rays up to 10 GV. Uh, in this uh, picture, uh, I have on the left picture, I have reported the uh, variation of the, uh, g uh, of the uh, galactic cosmic ray uh, flux uh, observed with the um, particle detector on, on board the LISA Pathfinder and uh, uh, the corresponding uh, uh, differential fluxes uh, at the beginning at the deep of the variations uh, inferred from uh, these measurements and the neutron monitor observations. Uh, but, uh, we compare these, uh, uh, our findings to the data from uh, MS02 that, uh, however, uh, didn't have any possibility to measure these small variations of cosmic rays due to the um, to, due to the small geometrical factor. Uh, in this uh, figure, I have reported to this purpose uh, a large uh, Forbush decrease observed by Pamela that uh, involve particles up to 50 GeV energies and would have generated a change in the test mass charging uh, uh, by a factor of three for the net charge and by a factor of four uh, by, by a factor of four for the net charge and by a factor of three for the effective charging. About the uh, charging of the test mass is due to uh, solar energy particle events. We do not expect uh, more than a few events uh, per, uh, per year if the uh, uh, solar modulation uh, will be actually low. And the charging anyway uh, is supposed to increase during these events by several orders of magnitude. And also in this case, details will be given by Mattia Villani on Thursday, uh, July 28. I leave you with my uh, summary and uh, I want to stress that uh, it will be very, very important to uh, carry on board LISA proper particle detectors for cosmic ray variations. And thank you very much.